I don't really care about all this new technology stuff. Just give me an old pen and paper any day. Okay, so this episode is about embracing change. I'll talk a bit about that. I'll also add a new feature to this video, which is meme of the week. There's been some pretty funny memes on the Discord server, so I want to reward that ingenuity in some way. And also at the end, I want to talk about a video that I've seen that has absolutely blown my mind. But before that, let's talk about change and embracing change. Now, it probably hasn't escaped your attention that Blender 2.8 is on its way. And in many ways, it's kind of here already. And generally, the feeling out there is very exciting and very positive, but I have heard from a few who are sort of reluctant to take on that change and I can certainly understand that. I've been trying it out and it's been crashing on me all the time. There's lots of different tools and settings to get used to and it can be a bit frustrating and infuriating at times. And your reaction, like many, might be to say, why on earth do they have to change it all? Well, I can certainly see where they're going. As I teach new people to Blender all the time, they look at the interface and it's not intuitive. But I think Blender 2.8 will be more intuitive to those people. And the old guys like me that have been using Blender for ages and we're really used to the interface, well, we just have to adapt and get used to it. Because the more new people that get on board with Blender, the better it will become, and then the better the tools will become, and that suits everybody that uses it. Interestingly, within us, there's always a reluctance to change, because that adaption can sometimes be a bit painful and a bit frustrating. This is particularly true when it comes to new technologies. Societies in general are really distrustful of new things and new technologies. When radio first came out, they were really worried that it was going to have a really huge impact on housewives. And they thought that housewives were going to get addicted to radio and just listen to it all the time. Then when TV came around, well, the same things there. People were just going to be watching TV all day long and do nothing else. The same for videos, and you could actually record things and watch them later. We're never going to get up and away from our TVs. Computer games, oh no, computer games, that's going to destroy our nation. It's going to turn our kids into mindless zombies. Okay, that one's true. And then there's the internet, the evil that's going to come in through our screens from the internet. It's going to kill us and destroy us all. Now, there have been bad things that come along with these technologies, but it's not the technology that's the problem, it's the people that use it. Yes, there are nasty people out there on the internet, but there are still nasty people out there whether you put the internet there or not. Of course, the problem comes when the internet helps those nasty people to do nasty things. But that's a massive subject which I don't want to get too much into at the moment. The main thing is that we can't be reluctant to this change because this change is going to happen. People have tried to ban things like television, videos, computer games, but those technologies have thrived and they are still moving on and getting better all the time. So my message is don't fear new technologies and new things and change and don't get left behind because of your fear to embrace them. It is the case that some things are just fads and they sort of come along and they go away just as quick and you've got to have some sort of wisdom to figure out what isn't really going to last and what's actually going to be a bit of a game changer and you need to get on board with it. I've mentioned it before, but artificial intelligence is a really interesting one. How far is that gonna change our lives? And lots of people are really fearful of that, but it is coming, whatever we do. At the Blender conference recently, Blender guru Andrew Price did a very interesting talk about AI, and I think he came up with one really good point, and that is that man combined with machine is actually better than machine itself. At least that's the case for the moment anyway. So his point again was to embrace that technology, work with it to produce something even better. Our goal as creatives should be to use whatever tools available to create something useful, meaningful and beautiful. The tools don't really matter, they're just an aid to being able to do that. It can be a daunting process though as a digital artist we're always getting new technologies and having to take on new things, and it's really fast moving. I remember seeing Substance Painter for the first time and then actually feeling a bit of disappointment and worried that my artistic skills weren't going to be enough anymore and that Substance Painter was doing it so much better, what was the point? And at what point does the technology become so good that it kind of feels like cheating when you're using it. Well, I think it's the case in ZBrush at the moment that you can just import a human base mesh. And you can certainly download one from the internet quite easily for Blender. And that might feel like cheating to you, but if you create something really amazing after that, where you've added so much detail because you haven't had to make the whole human being from scratch, then that has actually enabled you to be more creative. It's like making a loaf of bread. We don't actually go out and ground the flour anymore. We take pre-made ingredients and put them together, if you do make bread, that is. But you will 
still need things like anatomical skills and understanding to adapt that base mesh to something that looks real and inventive and exciting. So it's still important to have those basic skills and I don't think technology is going to quite destroy those. But use the technology, use what's available to push yourself even further into creativity. Embrace the change. Now the reason I say this is because I have seen the most amazing amazing video about Blender and Blender 2.8 and EV. I saw a tweet from CG Geek. You've probably come across CG Geek. He's an excellent YouTuber, much like myself. And he pointed out this video. Really make sure you go and watch it. It's called Goodnight Claire and it's a breakdown and it's from Daniel Bystedt. I think that's how you pronounce it anyway. And he's broken down all the things that he's used within Blender 2.8 to create this amazing piece. And if I'd watched this and not realized it was Blender, I'd be thinking, oh wow, that piece of software is just a game changer. But that's a piece of software that he's using for free. And he's really made an amazing piece out of it. So let's challenge ourselves to get into Blender 2.8, get behind it, enjoy it, and really push our creativity. So I hope after seeing that video, you'll be as excited about 2.8 as I am with all those creativity options. So a new feature today, we're gonna to have meme of the week. And I've chosen this one, the surprise my wife today meme. So if you haven't already, get across to the Discord server and you can post in the anything channel your digital art related meme. You could even get creative and make your own. Please try and stick to the rules though. We want to make this a nice, clean place. Also, the deadline for the competition is tomorrow, Monday the 26th. And I'll be collecting those in on Tuesday. So the deadline is 12 p.m. Monday night. GMT and you can be on the wall of fame if you win. Remember there's a 2D section this time as well so there'll be two pieces up on the wall this time and if you've got any thoughts then write a comment below and tell me what you think about embracing change and as always thanks for watching and see you next time.